All right, so um, this is the unit that's just going to deal with a lot of genetic stuff. So for the next couple chapters, we're going to be talking about not only the structure of DNA, but how it's replicated, how it's transcribed to make RNA, and then how RNA is translated to make uh, protein. But today what we're going to focus on is the cell cycle. And the cell cycle is what regulates or tells a cell when it should be dividing. So your cells aren't dividing all of the time. They're only dividing, or they're only in the cell cycle, I should say, about 10% of the time. And of that 10%, uh, mitosis, which is the actual process of cell division, that's only occurring in 10% of 10% of cells. So that means at any given time, of all of your cells, only 1% of them are going to be undergoing the cell cycle. And so when they enter into the cell cycle, that tells them, okay, let's replicate your DNA, let's make a copy of your DNA, and then we're gonna go through and we're gonna separate those copies into individual cells during mitosis. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. All right, so when we're talking about cell division, we are essentially talking about mitosis. And so the definition of mitosis is um, division of the nucleus. And so the division of the nucleus, or mitosis, is quickly followed by cytokinesis, which is the um, division of the cytoplasm. And so there's lots of different roles for cell division uh, in our tissues. <clears throat> Uh, for instance, um, many uh, multicellular organisms, whenever they make um, a copy of a cell, whenever they undergo mitosis, uh, there's three different main kind of purposes for this. Uh, one of them is during development. So after fertilization occurs, you have the sperm, you have the egg, the egg gets fertilized, you start with your diploid organism, which is one cell. Well, you obviously have to make a whole bit, bunch more cells in order to end up a grown organism. <clears throat> so development from a fertilized egg is going to involve a lot of these cell divisions. Um, also, they're going to be used for growth. So again, kind of as we develop, as we age, as we get older, we're going to grow in various different regions, and that's going to be due to cell division as well. And then finally, we can also use cell division in repair. So if we break our arm, all right, we get a cast, we get it set, well, all those new little bone cells are gonna come in and try to replace the, you know, the broken bone. Same thing, if I you know, cut myself on my skin, there's gonna be a repair process that's going on. And so repair, um, development, and growth are gonna be the three main reasons why we uh, use cell division. Now in single cell organisms like bacteria or like yeast, when they go undergo this mitosis process or undergo a cell division, that's, they're going to make an identical, identical clone of themselves. So they're, def, they're just making a copy of themselves. They're making a second organism. So we say they're cloning themselves because they're just making an exact copy of themselves. And so um, we're going to talk about all the events that lead up uh, and into mitosis and how the cell cycle uh, is used to regulate these processes. But first we need to go over some terminology associated with DNA. I know y'all know what DNA is, um, but there's different types of DNA based on what stage of the cell cycle it's in. And so your DNA, or our, said our DNA, eukaryotic DNA, is going to be linear. And along this DNA, you're going to have multiple different genes. So this would be gene 1, gene 2, gene 3, so forth and so on. And all of these genes are array, arranged on chromosomes. And so we have, humans have 46 chromosomes. 23 from mom and 23 from dad. So that's why during development we are a, a mix between both parents because we're getting a little bit <clears throat> of each of their DNA. So these genes are arranged along a chromosome. And when you think of a chromosome, most people think of the characteristic X-like shaped chromosome. This is in fact called a chromosome. And this chromosome represents 
the condensed version of DNA. And so you're actually only going to see chromosomes when a cell is in the cell cycle. And specifically uh, when it's undergoing mitosis. So in the M phase of the cell cycle, which we'll talk about, but the chromosome, we think about chromosomes or the units of DNA, but they're not actually a chromosome all the time. They're only a chromosome about, you know, 1% of the time. The other state of DNA um, is going to be this, it's just not going to be very condensed, it's just going to be kind of loosey-goosey, like spaghetti. And so this kind of uncondensed form of DNA, this is called chromatin. So most of the time, your cell, your DNA is going to be real loose and very uncondensed. Whereas when you're undergoing um, cell division, then you are going to have these, your DNA is going to tighten up and it's going to condense really tight and going to create these chromosomes. Now, there's two different types of cells in your body. You've got somatic cells and you've got gametes. Somatic cells are every single cell in your body other than sperm and egg. So when you're talking about somatic cells, somatic cells are only going to undergo mitosis. And so somatic cells, those include liver cells, heart cells, brain cells, skin cells, and all the other types of cells. Um, and so these somatic cells, they're always going to undergo mitosis. Whereas your germ cells, or your gametes, which are your sperm and egg, they're only un going to undergo meiosis when they divide. And so we're not going to talk much about meiosis uh, today, but I think we'll talk about it uh, next week. But anyways, what we're going to be focusing on today is the somatic cells, so all the body cells minus the sperm and the egg. And so we're going to go through, we're going to learn how they get ready for mitosis, how they enter the cell cycle, how they exit the cell cycle, um, and ultimately how they're going to divide in mitosis. Okay, so when we have these chromosomes, so we're, we're basically talking about the process of mitosis right now. When we have these chromosomes, they're going to be attached by something that's called the centromere. And so before a cell can undergo cell division, it has to make a copy of its DNA, right? Because if we have a cell and we only have one copy of DNA, that means you would only have one new cell that has a version of DNA in it. So that's why you have to make a copy of it so that they can be pulled apart so you have the same genetic material in each cell. And so once you replicate your DNA, once you make a copy of your DNA, you're going to have them held together by this centromere. So the centromere is just a region that holds these two copies um, next to one another. And the name of these two copies right here, let me draw it up here, but so this guy and this guy, these are called sister chromatids. And they're called sisters because they're identical to one another. All right, all we're doing is we're using this one strand of DNA to make a second copy. And so once you replicate your DNA and make a copy of that DNA, you're going to have sister chromatids that are going to be held together at the centromere. And then meiosis, as we mentioned, meiosis is going to be a very specific process which has its similarities and differences compared to mitosis. Um, but meiosis is going to involve these germ cells, these gametes, your, um, your eggs and your sperm. But like we said, we're going to focus on the somatic cells today. Questions so far? Okay, so here we can see, here's our sister chromatids right here. So this is, when we start off before we go into the cell cycle, we only have one copy of each chromosome. And so after we undergo 
replication, we make a copy of our DNA, and that's what creates these sister chromatids. And again, those sister chromatids are going to be held together by a region of the chromosome called the centromere. And so these two are sister chromatids related to one another. These two are sister chromatids. These two are sister chromatids. And so during mitosis, the whole point is after you make a copy of your DNA, now you need to separate the DNA into two distinct cells. And so during mitosis, you start off with one cell that has a whole bunch of sister chromatids in there. And then during the act of mitosis, we separate those copies from one another so you get an exact copy of the cell that you started with. So these two daughter cells are going to be identical to the cell that gave rise to them. And again, um, during mitosis, we're separating these two copies of DNA into different cells so that each cell can have its own set of genetic information. And so here's the actual cell cycle. Um, it's made up of four different stages. When a cell is not in the cell cycle, so remember we said 90% of the time a cell is not in the cell cycle, we call that the G0 phase. And so whenever a cell is ready to enter the cell cycle, they will leave G0 phase and they will enter right here into G1. Now this G1 phase is considered kind of a growth phase. That the cell is getting ready basically to replicate the DNA right here. And so during the G1, the cell is growing, it's getting everything ready for cell division. And then the next phase is the S phase. This is the synthesis phase. All right, this is where your DNA is going to be replicated. This is where you're going to make a copy of your DNA. And after S phase, we have another growth phase, the G2 phase. Now in this phase, this is making sure that everything went smoothly in S phase, and it's also getting stuff ready and preparing the cell for mitosis. And so once the cell leaves the G2 phase, it's going to enter into the M phase. Now, the M phase is not just mitosis, but it's also followed by cytokinesis. And so, M phase is going to occur first, or well, the whole thing is M phase, but mitosis is going to occur first, and then that's quickly going to be followed by the division of the cytoplasm, or by cytokinesis. And then once it's gone through the complete turn of the cell cycle, the cell will leave the cell cycle and then go back into this G0 stage, or this non-dividing stage. And so this, this mitosis part right here, that's what we're talking about when we say your cells are in mitosis only 1% of the time. So your cells are only actively in the act of dividing during this little sliver right here in the M phase, and that's about 1% of the time for any given cell. Yeah, so um, any given cell at any point of time is only going to be in the actual act of mitosis in the process of dividing the cell 1% of the time. And so technically we said that the entire cell cycle only makes up 10% of cells. And of that 10%, 10% of 10% is undergoing mitosis. So 10% of 10% is... 1%, right? And so cells are only actively dividing about 1% of the time. And each cell is on a different um, on a different cell cycle. So just because one cell is dividing doesn't mean the one next to it is going to be dividing. And so think of this as kind of like a clock. It's a cellular clock that tells the cell, okay, we're ready for you to make a copy of yourself. Let's go ahead and enter the cell cycle go through the turn and then by the time it comes out you'll have a copy of the cell. And so um, one of the most important aspects of the cell cycle is going to be this M phase that we're going to spend a lot of time uh, talking about. So basically it ends in M phase? It ends after M phase, yeah. Yeah, so here's mitosis and it technically ends after cytokinesis. 
because inside of kinesis, I mean, in mitosis, all you're doing is you're separating the DNA from one another. And then cytokinesis is the actual, so here's my DNA and here's my DNA. Cytokinesis is the actual dividing, dividing of, that makes the two individual cells. So mitosis is just separating the DNA into opposite sides. Cytokinesis is where you actually get the cell kind of pitching off and actually becoming two individual cells. And so they're really closely related. They're almost kind of happening simultaneous, but we give them two different names. Cytokinesis, meaning division of the cytoplasm, and mitosis, meaning division of the DNA, or division of the nucleus. Okay, so we're going to start off and we're going to talk about what actually occurs in mitosis. And so there are five different stages of mitosis. And these are going to be pretty much the exact same thing that happens in plant cells as well. So um, plant cells and animal cells have the same process going on in mitosis. The only thing that's going to differ between mitosis in plant cells and animal cells is going to be um, how that cytoplasm actually divides. And so it's these, uh, the cytokinesis that's going to have a little bit of differences in plant and animal cells. But for now, we're going to focus um, on animal cells, but just keep in mind it's essentially the same thing that's going on in plant cells as well. So the first thing that's going to happen, once your cell enters, so here's my cell cycle. Here's G1, S, G2, and then we've got mitosis and cytokinesis. So once a cell has replicated its DNA in S phase, it's gone through another G2 phase, now it's ready to go into mitosis. And so mitosis is divided into these five steps. The first one is called prophase. Prophase is where your, all your DNA, or sorry, all your chromatin, I should say, so all your loosey-goosey DNA is going to condense. And when it condenses, it becomes a chromosome. Now, the reason why we're condensing our DNA, can you imagine how hard it would be to move this around the cell if it's all spread out everywhere? Compared to if it's really tight and in a nice, neat little unit, it's going to be easier to move around the cell. So that's why our DNA condenses right before um, we undergo mitosis or undergo cell division. And so that's going to occur in prophase. Also what's going to happen in prophase is you're going to get the formation of what's known as a mitotic spindle. And the mitotic spindle is an apparatus that's used to pull apart the sister chromatids. So here's my cell. Um, we have these centrosomes at each end of the cell. Now these centrosomes, remember we said that those are the microtubule organizing center. Remember we said microtubules are used in mitosis to pull the sister chromatids apart? Well that's the spindle apparatus. That's what we're talking about right here. So during mitosis, you're going to have all of these microtubules come and attach to the sister chromatids. And then during anaphase, it's going to pull those sister chromatids apart. Well, this spindle apparatus that's right here, this starts to get set up in prophase. Now, it doesn't get complete like this until metaphase. So this would represent a metaphase cell with the spindle apparatus completely complete. But in prophase, you'll see that you'll start to see the movement of the centromeres and maybe a couple microtubules, but it's just beginning. It's just getting started in prophase. Now, after prophase comes prometaphase. Uh, prometaphase is when you can start to see these chromosomes appearing because they're finishing condensing. So they start condensing in prophase, and then you can actually see these condensed chromosomes in prometaphase. Um, also, you got to remember all this DNA up until this point is still contained in the nucleus. 
And so in order to shuffle around all the DNA, the nuclear envelope has to be dissolved. And so that's another step that's going to happen in this prometaphase. So once that, that nuclear envelope goes away, then we can start shuffling and moving our DNA around the cell. Um, and also, we're going to continue to set up this spindle apparatus. Except in a uh, prometaphase, what's going to happen is you're going to have the centromeres, I'm sorry, not centromeres, you're going to have the centrioles, they're going to start connecting to all the chromosomes. And so the spot at which the microtubules connect to the sister chromatids is called a kinetochore. And so the kinetochore is a region within the centromere region. So we have our chromosome right here. You know, our centromere is the area where the sister chromatids are held together. And the kinetochore is a region of the centromere. So when these microtubules attach to these sister chromatids, they're attaching to the kinetochore. And the kinetochore is found in the region of the centromere. Does that make sense? No? Yes? Yeah. So, um, once we've replicated our DNA and we've started into mitosis, the DNA is going to condense and prophase and you're going to start to see the formation of the spindle apparatus. In prometaphase, that's where you actually see these microtubules attaching to the DNA. And so 